Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. There are a couple of very interesting stories that are floating around in the world of tech, one of which is an AMD as well as Intel partner uh, deciding that it would be a really good idea to publicly leak the roadmap of both AMD and uh, Intel's upcoming future CPUs. So I have a feeling that someone over at Solano, which is the culprit here, is going to be getting a spanking. And we're then going to be tackling RDNA 5, specifically some leaks concerning these specifications as well as some of the performance rumors um, for their mid-range and lower end. But yeah, I'm going to put my glasses on because my eyesight sucks ass. And we're going to begin with the AMD stuff. I won't go super in-depth into the specifications because at the end of the day, this is official, unofficial. We've spoken about many of the rumored specifications in the past, of course, for Zen 6. Uh, but it seems now like we have some confirmation as to the release date. And you can see, for example, that in 2026, and bear in mind that this is the mobile roadmap. And we can see that in 2025, we've got obviously the Strix Point and Kraken Point and so on and so forth, which we know about, so I'm not going to regale, regale you with, excuse me. And then Fire Range is going to extend into 2026. Strix Point Halo is also going to go all the way into 2027. Gorkin Point is 12 cores, 55 tops, Zen 5, 4 nm. And you will notice that actually Gator Rande, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, probably not, Medusa Point, which is Zen 6, 3 nm, FP10, and also Medusa BB. And obviously these are different product segments. So for example, higher end, uh, premium, mainstream, and then like entry level. Now you will see that Medusa Point, for example, is not showing up until 2027. So people I've seen online are getting a little bit confused about this, like it's, um, you know, surprising. From my understanding anyway, 2027 has been the date that's been touted for the mobile lineup of Zen 6 for some time now. It's looking like it's going to be Q1. I've heard one or two people tell me it's Q2, but I think Q1 is much more likely. So maybe we'll see some type of announcement in 2027's CES. And obviously for the desktop, things are a little different. We're going to see AMD launching uh, the what will it be called, Ryzen 10,000, whatever it ends up being called, you know, Zen 6 Ryzen, basically, uh, that's going to be in the second half of uh, next year. Now, the good thing, of course, is that we're going to see a big bump in specifications and performance capabilities, for example, higher uh, core counts per CCD. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see how Intel actually ends up competing. I have already linked some of the updated information concerning Zen 6 in a video from a couple of days ago, but I also just want to briefly tackle Intel. Unfortunately, there's this information here, so I'm just going to mention this as a kind of by the way. Uh, so in 2025, we have a whole bunch of of Arrow Lake SKUs, uh, for example, HX, the H's, the U's, and Lunar Lakes. And then obviously moving into next year, we have Panther Lake, uh, two Panther Lakes, and a Wildcat as well as a, sorry, Wildcat Lake. That's a brilliant name. I'm sorry, but that, that name just entertains me. I can't explain why. Uh, but um, next year, of course, Intel will also be releasing Nova Lake. I genuinely am actually really excited for Nova Lake at this point. My major concerns for Intel aren't actually their um, their tech and performance. It's whether they can get over the next couple of years in terms of, uh, well, just money, <laughs> basically speaking, and how much of their talent actually remains because they are really suffering a big, um, basically a big brain drain and it's kind of like what happens you know you kind of like hit that terminal point where a lot of the talent starts going thump out of the company and obviously that's never a good thing and now we're going to move on to amd rdna 5 specifically is going to focus on two of the mid-range well actually it's a mid-range and a lower end gpu and credit to tom over at moore's law is dead and also tweak town which is where i initially spotted this so of course i will leave a courtesy link to them as well now there are um, a couple of various uh, apus that are listed here such as medusa point and halo mini i'm not going to focus on them for this specific video i want to focus on the alpha Trion 4 and 3 because personally speaking they just intrigue me more um now at the end of the day obviously all of this is rumor it's going to be very interesting to see how amd actually market and push rdna5 or whatever it ends up being called 
because the reality is, to my understanding, um, and you can, A, this is based on A, some, you know, kind of stuff I've heard under the table, but B, you can kind of make this out yourself just by listening to the likes of Mark Cerny over at Sony, what Microsoft are doing for the next generation of Xbox and blah, blah, blah. There is a real pivot at the moment from those companies to really push ray tracing and path tracing performance. So you could make a very good argument that uh, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense that uh, that's going to be the premier way that AMD are going to focus on improving the next generation of Radeon products. Now, with that said, let's take a look at some of these specifications. 24 uh, RDNA 5 compute units. Now, of course, this could move up and down. They can adjust things because these GPUs are not going to release in these particular instances until 2027. So there's certainly a lot of time for this to be refined. We know what happens with GPUs. You know, stuff gets cancelled, stuff gets adjusted, information can be incorrect. But uh, regardless, this is going to be a roughly on par with a 3060 to a 40 to a 4060, but with ray tracing having significantly higher performance. Now, Tom is speculating that it's, 20, it's 12 to 24 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and this is because of a 128-bit LPDDR5X memory controller, which is supplemented with 10 megabytes of L2 cache. Now, the, the L2 cache is not um, confirmed. He's extrapolating this. It seems that AMD are going to be really changing the design of its GPUs. They're not going with the old Infinity cache for RDNA 2. Um, and it's kind of funny because when I was leaking like a whole Infinity cache for the RDNA 2 series back in the day, it was like, well... I actually was somewhat surprised it was a higher level cache, to be honest. I, I kind of expected um, AMD to nuke that sooner and to go more of an AMD, sorry, an NVIDIA-like thing. And it seems like they are finally doing that. Um, regardless, Alpha Trion 3 is a little faster. It's going to be between a 4070 and a 9070. Let's just say 9070 in rasterization. Again, much higher in ray tracing. Um, 48 compute units, and essentially they are um, speculating it's going to have a double the cache, so that's 20 megabytes of L2, 384-bit bus. So this can either be LPDDR6 or a 256-bit LPDDR5X memory controller. Same number of PCIe lanes, which is 8. Honestly, I think that's absolutely fine. A 9070 is not exactly saturating a Gen 5 bus Um you know 16 lanes so there are also some other benefits i guess you could say but um yeah it's going to be very interesting to see how this performs because amd allegedly are considering going with either 16 or 32 gigabytes or at least that's what tom's speculating i think that a gpu of this kind of performance i i think people are going to riot if it's got 16 gigabytes or less my personal opinion i'm let me know in the comments what you think but I think in 20... When is this launched? Uh, just checking. Yeah, 2027. So if AMD goes for like under 16 gigabytes, and I say that even actually for the lower end, like uh, 84, I think people are going to be pissed. I don't think people are going to be happy. And I also suspect that NVIDIA may increase the amount of... And this is not a leak. I would not be surprised if NVIDIA has learned a lot of lessons from RTX 50. And with RTX 60, we see an increase in the amount of VRAM. The only problem is that prices for GDDR7 and so on are a lot more expensive. I'll be very interested to see what the final specs are actually for RTX 60 and what direction they go with in terms of memory. Oh, and one other small little thing. I'm not going to spend too long on this because honestly, I don't want my blood pressure to go too high. But um, yeah... Sebastian on Twitter, I'll leave a link to this, of course, in the video description, but you can see it on screen yourself. Uh, basically, Z Worms, I have no idea how you pronounce that, but basically, they managed to get a bit of a test in with a system. I bought. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having real difficulty focusing here. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's just the angle levels, I swear. Um, they're having they they oh fuck anyway they had they had a hands-on with uh borderlands 4 at um gamescom which is fine that's great but do you remember that i put out a video a couple of days ago um 
talking about why I'm getting very frustrated with modern gaming. And I actually used Borderlands as an example because NVIDIA, to their credit, put out a video showing that with MFG, you're getting around 250-ish frames a second, give or take, right? Which obviously means that's with MFG4. So you can you can start doing the math yourself. I'm not going to do the math for you. It's, it's not good, is what I'm trying to say, uh, without MFG. And that, by the way, is with DLSS. Now, I mean, you can read this on screen yourselves, guys. This is just... This is ridiculous. So with a 5080, um, and at, with a 5080, it's dipping to below 60 FPS of 4K badass, which is the highest preset with DLSS SR set to balanced. That's not even quality. It's balanced. Now, um, I, I actually shared this on Twitter. And one or two people did point out that, you know, in the back in the day, um, GeForce Now was actually somewhat hamstrung because it was, uh, I think it was like Zen 3 or something like that. But NVIDIA have recently did a, done a big upgrade with G GeForce Now. And so that upgrade actually moved things to Zen 5. <laughs> so I, I think it's like 8 core Zen 5 and a 5080. And this thing is dropping below 60 FPS. And again, this is with DLSS set to balanced. It's not even quality. It's a it's oh my oh my god. And what what really irks me about this again is that the game uh, the game just it's not like it's Alan Wake 2 with path tracing, right? Like if it was Alan Wake 2 with path tracing at 4K on a 5080, I wouldn't exactly be like, "Yo, that's great," but I would be a little less um perturbed. I don't know. Like it, um, I believe it's Unreal Engine 5, which is another um, epic own, <laughs> if, you excuse the, if you excuse the phrase. I don't know. Uh, just... Oh, man. I'm just... Look, all I'm going to say is please don't pre-order this uh, Vampire uh, 2 and also Metal Gear. And I say that, by the way, as someone who wanted to buy Metal Gear as well as Vampire. And I'm just... Oh, God. I don't know. Like, retro gaming's looking pretty sweet right now. Anyway, guys, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.